Hello everyone and welcome back to Beatley Tones Beatles channel. Good to have you here. How are you doing? Hope you're all doing doing well. <clears throat> Thank you very much for joining for the third and final review of the three part Get Back series. Uh, this third episode has been my favourite episode uh, of the three. Um, thanks everyone that's uh, subscribed to the channel uh, recently, I really appreciate it and lovely to have you here. If you're seeing the channel for the first time, uh, please subscribe uh, using the button over there and give the video a like and hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything in the future. I want to thank um, everyone for all the comments on the first two parts um, that have been reviewed. Uh, really appreciate that. Inter really interesting thoughts from all of you that have commented. Thank thanks very much. Uh, please please give me your comments on on part three and the, and the series as a whole. Uh, I really like to hear what you all think think about it. Um, so episode three. Uh, just short of two hours and 20 minutes long. Uh, absolutely fantastic. I'll do um, a little summary at the end of this video of my thoughts on the whole whole thing. Um, if you've missed the reviews of part one and part two, uh, there's a link in the description down below and there'll also be a physical link at the end of this video that you can just click on and go and watch them. So we pick it up on day 17 uh, and the episode starts off with um, the as the credits are rolling with the song Window Window which is a George Harrison song uh, which appeared on uh, the All Things Must Pass box set that was recently out. It's uh, one of my favourites actually of the outtakes. Uh, I really like that song and it's a shame that it never got developed further. Um, we then cut to, uh, to to Ringo on the piano. Um, he's playing the others, um, the beginnings of Octopus's Garden. He's only got a little bit of it. Um, we we hear that on the, the Let It Be box set, but here you see a much uh, extended version of what went, went on there. And obviously you're seeing the visuals. Uh, Jules is really trying hard uh, to help him out. He's trying to find the chords uh, for the next part of the 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 song um, and um, it's an interesting comparison sort of how in how George uh, is taking the time with Ringo to help him with his songwriting um, compared with John and Paul who seem you know less interested in pushing George along the songwriting track you know with his songs when he's he's struggling they're not showing too much um, interest. Um, a bit later we have um, uh, George, George Martin comes in and he chips in uh, a few few ideas and, uh, and and we see them working it through with, with John on drums which is quite interesting. Then um, Paul and Linda and Linda's daughter Heather uh, arrive at the studio. Uh, Heather who later became Paul's daughter um, when he adopted her um, and there's a lot that it kind of that it kind of then turns into the Heather Eastman show and it, the, the part with he Heather in there is that you know it's just utterly charming um, we, we get a, we get a real glimpse of how uh, how the Beatles um, particularly Ringo and John uh, interact with 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 children which is something that you know that we we haven't we haven't seen this before and it's 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 really quite interesting it sort of starts with with Heather telling John that they've just got some cats and John said oh have you eaten them and, she, and she's like no no we don't eat cats and, and she said one looks like a tiger and she and John says well you definitely don't want to eat that one and then it sort of cuts to um, a little take of let let it be um, and uh, I'm not sure why at this at this point they're, they're they're working on let it be because you know they've got this rooftop thing coming up and they've already sort of said they can't get a piano up on the roof so we know that sort of you know let it be and long and winding road are definitely off the menu um, for the rooftop thing um, but 
we, we see them um, work, you know, working through Let Be, and Heather is with Ringo, and she's playing uh, brushes on on Ringo's hi hat while he's he's playing the song, and then she she gives the snare a, a whack, and sort of Ringo, you know, jumps up like that. You know, he's having a little game with her, and then we see. Uh, Yoko get on the mic again for the third time uh, and Yoko's like doing her you know her her screaming thing and and then it kind of cuts to to Heather and she just looks totally perplexed by what she's just witnessed um, and then the next scene you you see Heather at the, at the mic and she starts doing what she's just seen Yoko doing so she start starts sort of you know screaming and caterwauling a little bit and and John sort of goes Yoko and uh, it's quite a nice little it's quite a nice little scene uh, um, that's the sort of the the end of the sort of the, the the Heather Eastman show but I I really like that that part and like seeing you know this this sort of interaction um, of the Beatles with with a with a child, I thought it was, you know, totally charming. Uh, we then get a, a version of uh, "Dig It," where they're sort of they're sort of singing "Twist and Shout" over it because it kind of kind of fits fits the call. Billy Preston is back with them. Um, they run through um, "Blue Suede Shoes," uh, "Shake, Rattle and Roll." It then cuts to a scene where they're 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 working on "Long and Winding Road" again, and um, you know, George. George Martin is down there uh, adding a little bit of direction. Um, we've got George Harrison is on acoustic guitar and John is on uh, electric guitar, but he's playing the bass notes uh, to the song on there. And Paul is kind of directing him. And um, one, of, one of the things in the original film is that Paul just comes over as just so um, controlling and, it, and kind of in a bad way. But... The thing is that the you know they just haven't got they haven't got the, the same worth ethic as Paul's got, um, and without Paul, I don't think they would have got anything done, done at all. Um, so he's kind of you know he's he, he's you know as the bass player he's kind of telling John you know which bass notes to play uh, on, on the song, and Jules has got these fantastic boots, these Yeti boots, um, which we keep getting a glimpse of, and they, they're really, really great boots. And um, this this version of, of um, Long and Winding Road that they're playing now, albeit, you know, it, it ended up with all the spectrisms on it, is the one that's actually used on the Let It Be album, and that is Day 17. So Day 18 starts with... Um, a couple of cover versions, Shake, Rattle and Roll, Kansas City. Uh, we see a lovely clip of John and Paul uh, doing a bit of rock and roll, dancing together, you know, swinging around and all that sort of stuff, um, which is quite nice to see. Uh, and then we get another uh, another George song. I've written, a, a, here's one that I wrote last night, um, and it, he's, he's starting to play uh, Old Brown Shoe. He's on the piano. Um, it, he asked Billy Preston to help him out with some of the chords, um, and then you, it, it kind of clips to a bit further on on the, on the old brown shoes sort of session where both Paul and Billy Preston are playing guitar. Um, and George, George makes a comment at the end: "Pianos are very difficult, aren't they?" But this whole this whole scene I thought was brilliant. Uh, it looked like everyone was having like lots of fun. Uh, with old brown shoe, apart from John, who didn't really get involved. Uh, there was some gear arriving, some speakers or something, and um, uh, jo John was helping bring in some some whatever it was speakers, I think it was, and uh, uh, doing that rather than getting involved in old brown shoe, which is uh, a little bit disappointing. Then. Uh, it cuts to another another go through with Long and Winding Road, and they're 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 trying to work out the arrangement of the song. Um, they're having trouble with the with the with the sound, and George Martin comes down onto the floor, and he's helping out. Uh, you know, saying that the you know you've got microphones in the wrong place, and speak the speakers from the PA are in the wrong place, and getting them 
moved in. So, so George Martin is sort of helping them sort of sort that out. So although he's not producing this album, um, he is involved in the in the production of the the, the sessions. We then cu uh, cut to a um, very familiar version of Oh Darling, uh, the one that we've ha had on the anthology for years. Uh, there's also on the, the new Let It Bo Be box set where John at the end sort of says um, that Yoko's divorce has just come through and they kind of cut, go into this sort of jam using the words but with John uh, using the the tune of, of Oh Darling but John creating his own words about you know the lawyer said it's okay and all that sort of stuff um so we've 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 ha we've heard this version for a long time but we've never seen the visuals to it uh but now we have the next sort of point of note was a, another run through of don't let me down uh which is getting better and better um but bearing in mind that they've been doing don't let me down since day one uh it's very, the very first song that we see at the beginning of episode one that they're working on they still haven't got the the lyrics scanning properly, so you know there's still a little bit of a way to go um, on "Don't Let Me Down." Another nice little bit was when we see uh, Paul um, playing the beginnings of "Strawberry Fields" and singing that himself. Some, something that we don't usually, you know, obviously it's a John song, so we don't usually see Paul singing that. And then we get lots of takes of "Get Back," lots of them. Uh, some that break down, some that are better than others, but we eventually arrive on the uh, the version of Get Back uh, that is used on the Let It Be album, the bit that where where Phil Spector he added sort of crowd noises at the end of it to make it sound as if it had come from the rooftop, but it's actually a studio take. Um, and then they're, they're back onto um, I've Got a Feeling, uh, which is also it's getting better. Uh, it's still not quite there yet, but but it is get it is getting better, and that's day eighteen. Day nineteen starts with uh, the the band talking about uh, the set list for the rooftop concert. Um, we then cut to um, uh, George working through the song something, um, and he's. We, we we get a, a bit of this on the uh, on the Let It Be box set outtakes where George asks Paul, um, "What can it be?" You know, something in the may, way she moves attracts me. Like, what can it be, Paul? Um, and and John pipes up. Um, you know, you just say the first thing that comes into your head, and until you get the word, it, 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 you know, attracts me like a cauliflower. George settles for uh, for pomegranate for now. Um, then Paul heads off uh, to a meeting. So the next clip that we see is another take of um, I Got a Feeling, but this time John is singing all the parts, so he's singing Paul's part as well. So that makes it a little bit different, something that we haven't seen seen before. Um, while Paul is, is, is still out, um, John mentions to the others that he'd seen, he'd seen uh, Alan Klein uh, had a meeting and uh, you know he says he th oh, I think he's great um, and I want you all to meet meet him um, the 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 next bit is uh, another another take of um, of old brown shoe uh, Paul's still not back um, and John gets a delivery while, while they're playing this John gets a delivery of a stylophone um, and uh, Great, great seventies toy uh, that had just had just come out. Um, pioneered, not pioneered, but sort of it was television advertised by Rolf Harris in the UK, uh, incidentally, and famously used on the song "Space Oddity" by David Bowie. Um, anyway, they get this style style of phone, and they're all having a go go on it. Billy Preston gets hold of it, and he 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 wants to work out old brown shoe on the on the stylophone, which is quite a nice little little scene. Um, the next bit of note is um, Paul's back. Um, they they give it um, another go of uh, "Don't Let Me Down," and this version uh, here is the one that ends up as the B side. I get back. Um, then we see uh, a really nice clip of them 
working out um, I Want You, She's So Heavy. Uh, and then another song, um, which is a Lennon McCartney song called Half, Half a Pound of Grease Pain. Um, and Paul sings this in a Cockney accent for reasons we're not so sure. And then we hear that uh, Alan Klein has arrived at Apple um, and they all go, go off to meet him, and, which we don't see. Um, and that's the end of day 19. So on to day 20. So this is the day before the rooftop concert. And this, this, this part um, opens with John and Ringo and Glyn Johns talking about Alan Klein, who, who the Beatles have met the night before. And you know, John is saying he's just fantastic, and uh, and he talks about the Rolling Stones uh, deal, um, how much they're you know they're earning much more than the Beatles are, uh, even though they're not as successful. And Glyn Johns knows knows Klein because he what he you know he's produced the Stones, so he he knows him. He says he's a strange strange fella, and he just cuts you know if he does. If he asks you a question and, he, and you don't like the answer that he's given, he just cuts you off mid-sentence. And Ringo said, um, "Well, it would be nice to have a, a con man who's on our on our side," um, which is um, not that great, <laughs> really, if you think about it. But anyway, uh, we all know what happens with Klein over the next sort of twelve months, sort of thing. Um, they then start talking about the, the 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 album. Paul wants fourteen songs on the album. John doesn't. Um, and um, George asks, "How many songs have we recorded that are good enough?" And John straight away says, "None," which is interesting as well. Um, they then sort of have a have a, have a little um, a little survey. Um, because Paul doesn't, Paul still doesn't want to go up on the roof. Uh, George doesn't want to go up on the roof. Ringo does want to go up on the roof, and so does John. So we've got a split camp uh, as far as the rooftop concert goes, and there's only one day uh, to go. We then see um, a list of songs, which are the songs that are planned for the album, and they realise that they have got enough songs for the album, and. On this list is uh, there's a little tick by the songs that they are planning to do on the roof, and on this list, uh, two of us is one of the songs that's, that's ticked, but that never got done um, on on the roof. But interestingly, in the original lineup um, of songs that they considered for for the album that were going to be within that that 14 songs for the album, it included Teddy Boy. And all things must pass, which is interesting. The next clip we see uh, a version of Dig It, where instead of shouting out, you know, like the FBI and the, uh, the CIA and the BBC and all that, John is just shout shouting out the names of all the tracks that are on this this list, uh, which includes All Things Must Pass and Teddy Boy and Dig It, which is still known as, you know, All I Want Is You. So that was quite quite a nice little scene. George then has a very candid conversation um, with with John, and he he tells him that he's got um, he's got enough songs to cover his quota of Beatles songs. Remembering he's only doing two songs an album uh, at best, um, he's got enough songs to cover all the next ten Beatles albums. Um, and he said, "I'm thinking of the that I might like to do an album." On my own and use all these songs and John's very encouraging saying he should do it and George is kind of justifying it by saying you know we should all go and do uh, you know a solo project and then it because it prolongs the Beatles thing you know we can come back and then do a Beatles album we'll be fresh and that that sort of thing which is he, he's kind of got a positive um, he's got a positive response from John um, about his songwriting. Then we get uh, something rather special, uh, um, a version of I Want You, She's So Heavy, but with Billy Preston singing uh, a sort of um, Martin Luther King lyric that I think he's making up making up as he goes along, but there's lots of, you know, I had a dream stuff, but 
it's really great hearing Billy uh, sing, uh, such a great voice, and um, that's a, a bit of a priceless moment, I think, but not quite as priceless as the next scene that I want to talk about, which is where we've got a version of Two of Us, which I'm going to call the Two of Us ventriloquist version, where John and Paul are singing Two of Us, but they're singing it like this, like a, a ventriloquist dummy sort of thing and um, they virtually do the whole song and and guess what John and Paul can still harmonise even with their teeth like this which I thought was, I thought it was a fantastic fantastic scene and that's day 20 it's day 21 and it's the day of the rooftop concert so it starts off with um, the map on the roof, um, the, the the film crew that is, and we get told that there's, you know, there's five cameras on the roof. Uh, there's a camera on the building opposite, and they've got three cameras uh, down on the street. And via a caption, um, we get told that the, that there's a hidden camera uh, in the reception, uh, which is going to prove quite useful um, later in the film. Um, it can't have been that discreetly hidden because George Martin um, arrives at Apple and he spots the camera straight away and gives it a big, a big grin. And we get to learn via caption that the Beatles are in a meeting and they're still, even at this 11th hour, they're still unsure about going up on the roof. Anyway, the next part is, is the rooftop concert. They obviously are going on the roof. And um, it's sort of... Um, it's quite interesting how Peter Jackson has gone about showing the rooftop concert. So in the main, we see the band the whole time, but occasionally he uses a sort of a split screen um, to show different aspects. So you kind of get uh, the band on one, on one screen, then you get the people that are gathering down below, uh, the, you know, the, the public that are, that are wondering what the hell's going on up there. Uh, on another one and you also get the uh, a bit later on you get the police on a uh, another sort of split split screen um, so it's quite an interesting way of sort of showing all the aspects at once but if you were kind of expecting to see the entire rooftop concert as the band uh, that isn't that isn't what happens anyway they do uh, they do get back as the sort of um, the sound sound check uh, and then we get uh, a couple of the, the, the we get two more versions of get back um, and then they go into don't let me down um, the uh, the one where where John gets the the, the lyrics wrong um, and then we start seeing the the the, um, the police um, arriving at, at, at Apple previously we've seen a few clips of some sort of city types um, moaning about the noise going on up there and it's all disrupting their business and all, all this sort of thing. Um, and you see a few interviews with people that are on the street. Most most people uh, are in favour of what's going on up on the roof. They're loving it. Um, the, both people, young and old, uh, you know, are all saying, you know, that they love the Beatles, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and they're enjoying this sort of this lunchtime um concert we then get um i've got a feeling which is the version that's used on the on the out on the album um and um the coppers are now in reception um and uh this is where we, we see a little clip of the receptionist so i think her name is debbie um and she really earns her money here because basically she's delaying she's delaying the coppers um, they don't realise, they don't even realise that the music is coming from the roof. They think that the Beatles are just in the studio and being extremely loud. They, they don't realise um, that they're, they're actually on the roof. Uh, both the, cop, the, the two coppers that come into the reception are very, very young. Debbie says she's going to look for Derek Taylor uh, and then she goes off and they leave them there. Meanwhile, the Beatles are carrying on up, up on the roof. Uh, one after 909 we see the, the version that's used on the album and um, 
the um, we then get uh, Dick a pony um, where um, John says that that he, he needs the word so uh, the ginger fella that we've seen quite a few times I think his name is Kevin uh, is kneeling down in front of John and he's holding the lyrics up for, for John to read as he's singing it uh, the version is still it's still got the all I want is you um, intro on it but it is it is the uh, the, ver the version that's used in let it be the cops are getting really irritated down in reception that they're just being kept kept held there delayed uh, they they've been told they've been told that they the, the Beatles are up there making a a live recording for a film and um, one of them says well can't they just like overdub it later um, now that's not really the idea about live performances so um, you can look up you can look up the the, the, the copper's name is Ray Shaler uh, and he tells about there's there, there's a uh, some stuff on the internet about his experiences uh, up there and um, back on the rooftop uh, we see we see John um, playing the national anthem on his, on his guitar and they, they, they're going into to I've got feeling and um, one thing I was going to say about about this rooftop concert is the songs that we see on the, the rooftop in the main is the first time we see any take uh, from start to finish during the whole the whole film, the, the rooftop songs are the only ones that are played all the way through. All the others are are just clips um, or partial partial songs. Um, but I've got a feeling it sounds fantastic, but there is no holding back the coppers any longer. And Mal uh, begin takes them up onto the roof, and we see them during I've got a feeling come through the the, the entrance, and they're now on the roof. There's lots of people on. On the roof, um, Yoko's up there, Maureen, lo lo lots of people, Michael Lindsay Hogg. Um, I'm not sure where Linda was. I don't sure. I didn't see Linda on the roof. I don't know why she wasn't uh, up there as well. Um, they go into uh, Don't Let Me Down again. Uh, the cops are on the roof, and Paul turns round and he spots that the coppers are there, and. Um, he gives a great big smile because this is what he's wanted all along and he gives a bit of a woo uh, he, he's very happy to see the cops on the roof and probably half hoping that they drag him drag him off um, uh, we then see uh, the, uh, the duty sergeant uh, Sergeant Pepper if you like um, arrive um, at Apple and he gets taken up onto the roof he's very very polite, but up he goes. He, go, he goes up there, uh, and they 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 finish. Don't let me down. And and uh, before there's a chance for the coppers to intervene, they go straight into get back. Um, but during during this take of get back, uh, Mal comes round and he turns off George's amp and he turns off John's amp, um, and it goes a little bit quiet. And George looks furious and he turns his amp back on uh, and they finish the song and that's it they're gone that's it that's the the final Beatles uh, live performance and what a performance it was absolutely superb really fan really fantastic loved that part of of, of the film and then they they, get, they go down and um, and then the next scene that we see um, is the is the Beatles in the control room, and they're listening to the playbacks of the of the, t the takes from the rooftop, and they're just all really digging it. Uh, they they're all really loving it, I think, and it does it it sounds fantastic on the on the on the playback, um, and that really is your day twenty one, and to all in, intents and purposes. That's really the end of the film, apart from the, the 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 credits. What I did find quite surprising um, is in documentaries like this, normally at the end of the documentary, there's normally a bit of an epitaph, sort of that tells you, you know, sort of what happened next. You know, there's no mention of 
you know, the 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 album, uh, the you know, the Glyn Johns mixing. There's no mention about Phil Spector being given the tapes and what happened to the album, uh, what happened with Alan Klein, you know, when the Beatles broke up, all that sort of stuff, which, you know, it doesn't really matter too much uh, to us Beatleheads, but if you're a casual viewer uh, and you don't really know the story of Let It Be, um, you could probably have done with that bit of information being tacked on the, the end in it you know, in the form of uh, some titles, um, but it's not there, it doesn't matter. But, so in summary, I have absolutely loved this uh, film, I think Peter Jackson has done a m magnificent job, magnificent job, um, not disappointed really uh, with any of it, we've had an insight into the Beatles at work and at play, um, it's been very very interesting uh, to eavesdrop on their conversations uh, especially the more sort of you know intimate ones um, particularly the, the 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 John and Paul conversation in the, the cafeteria in sort of episode two um, but it, it has just been a fantastic insight in, in into all of that I found it absolutely exhausting um, it's you know, it's eight hours worth of gear, and um, you, although I found it exhausting, I could watch more. I want to see more. Um, I'm very, I'm, I'm kind of, <laughs> I'm kind of like left a bit empty. Um, now it's, it's, it's all over. Um, if you think about sort of the amount of time um, that has passed since we first learned that this project was taking place, and put it in perspective. Of Beatles history it's like the, t the amount of time between Revolver and Let It Be it's about the same amount of time um, but yeah so emotionally drained uh, em exhausted but have loved every minute of it I hope you have too um, please tell me in the comments your overall thoughts of what you've seen um, Thank you for joining me uh, on this on this video and the reviews of part one and part two. Really appreciate that and your comments. Um, when the little circle comes up, if you want to subscribe to the channel, sort of around here somewhere, um, please do. And uh, I will see you on the next video. But I'm going to have a few days off, I think, and uh, uh, I'm going to come back fresh with uh, the next video which I think is going to be um, the Battle of 1971 Ram versus Imagine. I'll see you on the next video. Thanks very much for watching.